This video was created in loving memory of Bentley. Pics and videos are brought thanks to Bentley the St. Bernard. It is thought that the breed was created when dogs native to the Alps were crossed with Mastiff-type dogs that the Roman army brought with them during the reign of Emperor Augustus. The name St. Bernard originates from the Great St. Bernard Hospice, a traveler's hospice in the Western Alps, between Switzerland and Italy. The pass, the lodge, and the dogs are named for Bernard of Menthon, the 11th century Italian monk who established the station. Before receiving the name of St. Bernard, these tireless rescuers were also called sacred dogs, monastery dogs, alpine mastiffs, and alpine dogs. The earliest written records of St. Bernard are from monks at the Great St. Bernard Pass in 1707, with paintings and drawings of the dog dating even earlier. These dogs were originally used by monks to guard the grounds. Monks may have discovered by accident that they were excellent pathfinders since these dogs never received any special training from the monks. In the mid-17th century, they became the go-to dog for rescue work, with their ability to smell a person buried under many feet of snow after an avalanche. These amazing dogs worked in teams, and when one found a victim, they would lie down with them to keep them warm while another dog alerted the rescue team. They can also predict storms and avalanches which have been attributed to their ability to hear very low-frequency sounds. During the three centuries for which the hospice has records, St. Bernard's were credited with saving more than 2,000 travelers. The most famous St. Bernard of this life-saving history is Barry Dermenschenretter, born in 1800. He reportedly rescued more than 40 lost souls in his lifetime. There is a monument to Barry in the Cimetière de Chiens, and his body was preserved in the Natural History Museum in Bern. In 1830, the monks attempted to improve their dogs' coats by crossing them with the thick-coated Newfoundland. That was a mistake. The long-haired offspring were inferior because ice built up in their longer coats. The modern St. Bernard is radically different from the original dogs kept at the Great St. Bernard Hospice, most notably by being much larger in size and build. These were originally about the size of a German Shepherd dog. Since the late 1800s, the St. Bernard breed has been refined, using many different large Molosser-type breeds, including the Great Pyrenees, Greater Swiss Mountain Dog, Great Dane, English Mastiff, and possibly the Tibetan Mastiff and Caucasian Shepherd Dog. The Swiss St. Bernard Club was founded in Basel in 1884. The St. Bernard was the first breed entered into the Swiss stud book that same year, and the breed standard was finally approved in 1888. Since then, the breed has been a Swiss national dog. In 1888, the St. Bernard Club of America was founded, and the club accepted the breed standard written by the Swiss. The St. Bernard is a giant dog, strong and muscular, with a massive, powerful head. Their skull is strong and broad. Seen from the front is slightly rounded with a distinctly pronounced stop. The skin of the forehead forms slight wrinkles above the eyes. Eyes are of medium size, moderately deep set, with a friendly and slightly sad expression. These may vary in color from dark brown to nut brown, and eye rims are completely pigmented. Their nose is black, broad, and square, with well-opened nostrils. The muzzle of this breed is short and wider than it is in length. The upper and lower jaws are strong, broad, and equal in length. They have a well-developed, regular, and complete scissor or pincer bite. St. Bernard's also have jowls, which makes them prone to drooling. The edge of the lips is black pigmented. They have medium-sized, wide, and set on high ears. These are triangular with rounded tips. The chest is moderately deep with well-sprung ribs but not barrel-shaped. The legs are muscular with large feet and well-arched toes. The tail is long, heavy, and set on broad. When in repose, the tail hangs straight down or slightly upturned in the lower third. When animated, it is carried higher. While all saints have double coats to protect them from the elements, there are two varieties of Saint Bernard's, short-haired and long-haired varieties. 
Short-haired St. Bernard's coat is dense, lying smooth and tough, without feeling rough to the touch. These dogs have plenty of undercoat, and their tail is covered with dense hair. On the other hand, the long-haired St. Bernard's topcoat is straight, of medium length, with plenty of undercoat. These dogs have short hair on the face and ears, feathered front legs, and bushy tails. St. Bernard may be white with red, red with white, the red in its various shades, or brindle patches with white markings. The colors red and brown yellow are of entirely equal value. Some saints appear to have actual masks, as their eyes and cheeks may be black, brown, or red. St. Bernards are one of the world's largest dogs, not only because of their height, which can range between 26 and 30 inches, between 66 and 76 centimeters at the shoulder, but also because of their weight. Male dogs easily range from 140 to 180 pounds, 63 to 81 kilograms, while females are approximately 120 to 140 pounds, 54 to 63 kilograms. Unfortunately, as with other very large breeds, St. Bernards live relatively short lives. Life expectancy is generally 8 to 10 years. The required level of physical activity is medium to low. It does not matter if they are long-haired or short-haired, their double coat needs weekly brushing to remove loose hair, dirt, and tangles. However, daily brushing is a necessity during shedding high seasons of fall and spring. Bathing is on a needs-only basis if they have rolled in mud or something that smells not so good. It is advisable to use a mild soap designed for dogs since shampoo may strip the coat of its naturally oily water-resistant properties. The eyes of this big dog are inclined to water, so around the eyes need special attention to keep them clean and free from irritation. It is also important to keep an eye on their ears to ensure they are clean, as their floppy ears can get infected. St. Bernard's need only moderate amounts of exercise, but they must get it to prevent obesity. Limit the amount of exercise you give your puppy until adult size. Do not let them run or jump on slick floors. St. Bernard's are prone to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Avoid letting them exercise in the heat of the day, and be sure they always have access to shade and fresh water. As they are so friendly and do not require as much exercise as other working dog breeds, St. Bernard's temperament might be neighborly enough for apartment living. The SPCA offers a free booklet to help you understand their needs and your role as their guardian. True to their heritage as hospice dogs, saints are friendly and welcoming. They are extremely gentle, eager, and loyal. The Saint Bernard is a social being. Saints are simply happiest when surrounded by all their humans, especially children. They have infinite patience for kids who treat them kindly. Most saints have a low prey drive and do well with other animals at home, especially if introduced early on, so everyone can tumble and play together. A Saint Bernard is so mellow and loving, it is easy to overlook how just their size might be a concern. An untrained saint can wreak havoc in your home and drag you down the sidewalk in their eagerness to greet people. Because the adult saint is so large, training is imperative. The earlier, the better. Train your St. Bernard laying down ground rules and be consistent in requiring that they follow them. Once saints understand what is expected of them, okay. their instinctive desire to please will generally offset any stubbornness. All puppies benefit from early socialization to learn how to properly react to other dogs and strangers. Puppy kindergarten and obedience classes, once all their vaccinations are complete, as well as spending 10 to 15 minutes a day practicing at home, will be invaluable. You can count on a saint to be an alert sentry. They should never be aggressive unless it is in defense of a family member. Saints are generally healthy, but like all breeds, they are prone to certain health conditions. Appropriate food and a St. Bernard's immediate environment are the main factors that determine health, vitality, and lifespan. If you are buying a puppy, find a good breeder who will show you health clearances for your puppy's parents. In Saints, you should expect health clearances from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals OFA, for hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, hypothyroidism, and von Willebrand's disease. 
and from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation, SURF, certifying that the eyes are normal. Osteosarcoma or bone cancer has been shown to be hereditary in the breed. They are susceptible to eye disorders called cataracts, as well as entropion and ectropion, in which the eyelid turns in or out. The breed is also susceptible to epilepsy and seizures, a heart disease called dilated cardiomyopathy, and eczema. St. Bernard owners should be aware of the symptoms of bloat, which include abdomen swelling and pain, excess salivation, restlessness and pacing, and retching. Like other deep-chested breeds, they can suddenly develop this life-threatening medical condition that requires immediate veterinary intervention. While these dogs need to eat enough food to maintain a healthy weight, do not overfeed a saint. Excess weight can strain the joints and worsen any problems in the dog's hips or elbows. The pound-for-pound -pound food requirement for saints may be lower than for other breeds because their temperament is more placid and they need less exercise. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that each new subscriber and positive comment motivates us to create more and better content. Thanks for watching.